Hi, welcome to my parlor. Hi, I'm Priscilla Andrews with Prey Parlor, and today I'm here to give you part two of my video tutorials on carving polymer clay beads for color and effect. Today we're going to be taking another step further than we did in my first video. Now we're going to be looking at things like this that we can carve and then stain and then sand to get different effects. We're also going to talk about how to use mica to get an effect on a bead and then sand it. And this is hopefully where we're going with this video and that's to make beads that have all kinds of different designs and patterns in dark, in light, made of any type of clay you want. And then you end up with some very interesting effects. Here's my last sample of a bunch of colors. I hope you like that. And I hope you like this tutorial. I look forward to working with you. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how you can take some scrap colors, which is what I have here. I'm going to use that for all these demonstrations. And here is a bunch of beads made from different colors, usually scrap clay I had left over. And I'm going to show you how we get those effects. And here's some more scrap clay that was stained with uh, blue. And you can see the scrap clay colors in there. And here's some more that are similar, except they have a little bit of translucent in them. So, if we're going to learn how to go from this to this, well then we just better get started. first bead I'm going to show you how to make is this effect using mica powders. The supplies you'll need to do this are clay of any color. I am going to be using black and then I'm also going to use a blue just to show you the difference of what we do. You're going to need an X-Acto knife you're going to need your mica powder. And in this case, I actually am using a, a nail finish additive. And I have to hold my breath when I use it because it's actually crushed up silver leaf, which is really cool. And then you'll need a, an applicator brush for that. And I make sure I use a soft brush because a stiff brush will send that stuff flying everywhere. So to get started, if you watched my first video on my channel about carving beads for color and effect, you will see or be familiar with what I'm going to do here. If you just take your X-Acto knife and gently start carving out little flat spots, let me switch hands here. Carving out little flat spots. And try to make them randomly in places. Don't make a pattern. We're gonna do that on the next one. Um, and the important thing is to leave a ridge between those carved spots. And you'll see why when we finish this bead. So go ahead and carve. There, now I have my bead all carved. You can see that. And what I'm gonna do is put it on a pin for baking. And I use a, a baking rack, which is this very well used and dirty one, as you can see. <laughs> 
Anyway, uh, we're going to put that on the pin so that we can put it on the baking rack, but also so we can do the next step. But before we do the next step, I'm going to do the other black bead and I'm going to carve it in a different way. I am going to use a linoleum knife or a uh, um, yeah cutter, I can't remember what it's called, usually a linoleum tool. And this is, you can buy it at a craft store, I think this costs seven or eight dollars. I bought uh, the speed ball and on the end it comes open so that you have different sizes of blades to take your cut out with. Now, so that you can see best what I'm doing, I'm going to be using one of the largest blades. You can get them in a V-shape. This blade is V-shaped uh, or a round cutter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in here with this and I'm gonna cut some slashes out of here. This bead is going to have little, or actually bigger in this case, uh, slashes just cut all the way around the bead for effect. There I have a bead that has a bunch of, of grooves cut into it. I should have mentioned before I even started that don't roll your balls of clay and then sit down and start carving, carving or cutting on them like this because they're going to be too soft and you're not going to get a good result. So roll your balls of clay out and let them sit for a little bit to firm up. You don't want them real warm or you're not going to get this effect. So now I'm going to put that on here also. Now I'm going to do the blue one and I'm going to do something sort of similar except I'm also going to use my ball tool. So I'm going to be cutting some lines around the diameter of this just to make it look a little different. I kind of just went around the equator, <laughs> the diameter of it. And now I'm going to take the large end of the ball tool and I'm just going to make a bunch of indentations with no particular pattern in mind. And I'm not making them real close because for variation and effect, I'm now going to use the small end of my ball tool and I'm going to put little dents in some places. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to make another row of those dashes, but I'm going to make them across the, the joints of the ones that I've already made. So there's our wonky bead. And I don't have room on this stick to do what I need to do, so I'm going to put that bead on another pin, make sure it's all centered. And here we go. Now, hold your breath. Hold your breath with me. Maybe that'll help me get this done right. So I have my almost like liquid silver. And I am just going to paint them all over with this. This silver has an amazing shine. You have to make sure you get it deep down in those recesses when you do it. And on the blue one, I didn't cover the entire part because this bottom part isn't going to matter. All we want is to have it in the recesses there. So now I'm going to bake these at 275 for 30 minutes. I am using Primo clay and then I'll be back to show you what we do next. The beads are baked and I have to admit this is the most exciting part for me. It's always uh, let's see what happened, let's see what we got and this one is stuck, I bet I got it. Now what I do is I take some wet dry sandpaper. I usually start with 400 because I don't want to take too much off. I'd rather start at 400 and go back to 320 if 
if I need something a little more aggressive to take it off. But what we're gonna do now is just sand off. Well, that's easier said than done, isn't it? Let's try this one. So that our silver that we put on there is only in the cracks. Do you see that? The bead is black. It doesn't look real black right now because we're sanding it. But give me a minute to get the rest of this off and then I'll show you how to get that bead nice and shiny. I have them polished for you and I started with the 400 and then I polished them with a 600 wet dry and then I just finish with uh, buffing it on a piece of jeans cloth that I have or a microfiber towel and that gives you a little bit of a shine on there. You might want to make more of a shine uh, by adding something to help seal the mica powder that's in there, but you could also just leave it as it is. I'm really loving how this blue one came out. It, it just looks cool. Now these last steps that we did, we will be doing some of that in our other beads to come. This was the simplest design or pattern to get some results like this. And I'm going to move on to progressively harder uh, beads that are going to be similar, but give you a little bit different effects. All right, we are ready to move on to another type of bead you can make. And again, I'm going to start with a relatively simple one, this step at least. I'm going to show you how to make some spacer beads that have some texture on them. I'm going to make two of them, uh, one this way, and then I'm going to make another spacer bead that's going to have some texture like this or this, or now that you've seen what I've done, you can probably guess how I did that one. So we're going to stick with this and maybe a little bit of that. And here's all you have to do. Make out a ball the size that you would like. And we're going to squish it. That's all. Squish that ball. Take a look. Make sure it's uniform. And there's a couple things you can do. One is you can take like the back of your tissue blade and you can just go around here and make marks like this on it. So that's going to be one side, kind of a scarred up, going in different directions and changing it up like that. So that's one way you can do that. Another one is you can take some texture such as, this is a makeup brush cleaner that has a bunch of neat textures on it. And you can take this bead and just roll it on something and then you've got that so I'm done with that and this bead I'm going to squish it just like the other one get it even get a nice band-aid print in there so now we've got a pretty nice uniform little bead and we're going to set that aside to be baked. Now we're ready to move on to something just a little more complicated. Uh, it's still not very hard though. But now we're going to do some of these things. Um, this purple one has some, just a line of it on each side or this way. Or one that you have partially cut or completely cut. So... Since I have already shown you how to do this part as far as cutting those pieces off on the bead, I am not going to show you how to do that again. I will show you how to get this effect 
by cutting the bead or what, what you do to the bead after you cut it. So I'm going to make a few beads and then I'm going to bake them and I'll be back. As I was getting a few more balls ready to show you, after I baked them, I was reminded of something. I grabbed a bunch of scrap clay pieces to, to use for this project and one of them was Sculpey 3. And that is just too soft to do anything with. As you can see, my bead got distorted as I tried to draw my linoleum tool <clears throat> through it. It just doesn't have enough of the structure to use for this project. Okay, so our remember. beads are all baked and we are ready to go to the next step, which is sanding. And don't groan, I can hear you from now, from here from, I can hear you from here. And I can't talk either. But anyway, we are going to be sanding these and it's not a lot of work. It's just gonna give us the effect that we want. I personally prefer to start with 150 or 100 sandpaper because that's going to give you more texture and you can always sand it down for less uh, obvious marks in there if you want but you and you can go back and make it rougher if you want but that means you have to paint it again and everything so to get this kind of texture that we're looking at here and we're going to be distressing these beads by just scratching them up with sandpaper but as you can tell this bead still has a shiny surface because we're going to be polishing it so those scratches have to be deep enough to withstand the polishing that we do later so all you do is i'm starting with this bead that has nothing on it because i'm going to make this bead uh, textured by just sanding it in all different directions and basically what you want to do is you're just scratching that bead up i make sure i go around to the inside of the edge because if you put a smaller bead on the other side then you still want that textured part to show uh, i forgot to tell you when i was first starting out doing this that you can also do this on smaller beads i have a lot beads that are a lot smaller than what i've shown you uh, like these small ones here i'm using larger beads today so that i can more easily show you what i'm doing now you might recall that this is the bead that we textured with the back of the tissue blade and then i just ran over that imprint i would still rough that up because it's nice just to have the added texture there in addition to the big pieces that you already have i'm going to go ahead and sand all of these and then I'm going to show you the next step and then we'll finish the beads. Now I have them all sanded and on this one I decided to show you I sanded one side but I'm not sanding the other side just so you can see that you can get uh, a different effect but still get an effect by not sanding if you want to. Now you might notice that we have a lot of stuff here so these have to be washed off or brushed off so that you get all of the dust out of your scratch marks. Otherwise, your stain won't hold. And so I am going to be cleaning these off and getting my table cleaned off, and I'll be right back. I have my beads all uh, scratched up, and I have brushed them off. I used just a toothbrush to get all the dust off, and I've put them on wires. It's going to be so much easier to paint these with your stain when they're on wires. So to get started with, we're going to use a stain and I'm going to start with my gold stain. I do this process so often that I keep some paint mixed up for this and I use one part of paint to 10 parts of water for this stain. And it's very important that you keep that ratio because if it's too thick with paint, it will be hard to sand off if the paint is too thick. If it's too thin, you will not see the effect that you have on there. 
So I'm going to be using a couple different colors. I decided to start with gold because I think this is kind of a dainty, cute bead with the white on there. And I thought gold would probably highlight the best. So I'm going to shake the bejesus out of my stain. And then I'm going to get it all over myself. Well, there you go. Put a little bit on my tile here. And I like to use a stiffer paintbrush because that will put the paint on a little harder so that it will get down into cracks and such. So I'm going to just load my paintbrush with stain and I'm just going to paint my bead. I make sure I, if there's any indentations that I've made like these holes, I'm gonna make sure you poke it down because sometimes you get an air pocket in there and then when it dries, there's no stain in there. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure you get that bead covered. But I'm going to let that dry. And I'm going to go on to my next color. This is my dark brown. Shake that up every single time you use it. Because that water and the paint will separate as soon as you stop shaking it. So that's important that you do that. Don't be worried now, that it looks dark because remember, we're going to be sanding a lot of that off. So I'm covering the whole bead because you will see we'll be sanding it off, but the bead will have a little bit different texture or hue. So make sure you cover the whole bead, even if it's a smooth spot, and we're going to sand that off. The color later. I'm going to use is a white, but you'll see that's really not white. I have found that white white doesn't really look good in this process so this is white with just a touch of i put a, a touch of black and a touch of uh, tan in there just to try and make it a little subdued so we're going to use the white and sometimes it's easier for me to just put the paint on the bead Make sure we get that down in those cuts that we made on the bead. And there we go. I'm going to paint these drying. Up, I'm, I'm going to show you how to make these beads that kind of look like bone. And it's going to be pretty quick because now that I've already gone through doing it on the round bead, it's the very same application on a flat bead. These were plain beads that I just scratched with sandpaper. That's all I did and then stained them and then came back and lightly uh, sanded them again and I'll show you how to do that when our beads are dry. These I made to look kind of like bone beads that had, had hold, dr holes drilled in them and all I did for that was use my ball tool and just went through and made my design like this. And then I baked it. And then I did the same thing we just did with the round beads. I stained them after I scratched them. I call it scratch them, but you actually sand them with sandpaper. And then we sanded off what we didn't want. So I just wanted to include these beads in this demonstration too, because they don't have to be round. They can be any shape, actually. If you look at what I've got here, there's kind of a, a squarish one right there. And we've got a longer oval bead right here. So you can do them in any size or shape that you want. I also wanted to show you some different effects that I didn't use here. This particular bead right here was made using the carving that we did but I took a toothbrush and I a stiff toothbrush and I roughed that bead up on this end so that when I stained it the stain went into the indentations there and when I sanded it some of the stain stayed so that's another texture effect here's one well, our beads are all dry and I went and put some different colors on some of them so you could just see what colors look like. And what I have here 
is my 400 wet dry sandpaper, but we're gonna use it dry because if we used it wet, it would just wash all our stain off. Here's the pretty little one we did with gold. And I'm gonna try the 400 and see if that gets off what I want off. And here's where you get to make the decision how roughed up you want this bead to look. Do you want it to have everything sand off, sand it off, and then you, you can do that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand off this one that was the plain bead that we did all the scratches on. And there's all our little scratches showing up. Now I'm gonna do this one which was the scrap clay, all uh, some blue, and then I used the white on it. And now, and there we have our bead with the white on the inside and the high points sanded. And that's the result you get when you do it like this, a little more sanding. You're going to get that effect with that. So next, let's sand this brown one. Once, if you remember, one side I scratched up with the sandpaper and the other side I didn't. And of course I could sand it a little bit more. But that's where you get that texture. Here is this round bead that we scratched up and put some holes in. And I'm just going to quickly run over that. And there's our bead with some texture on it. It just adds a little character and more rusticness to a bead. I saved this one for last because I think, well, it's not quite last. I got one more to go. Um, this black looked to me like it was a little thick. Well, I guess it wasn't. It's coming off pretty easy. There's our marks that we made in it. And then on this side, there's the marks that we made with the back of our tissue blade. And there you have a little bit more dramatic effect using black. Turned out pretty good. This is the one that I used making the, uh, the brown with a little bit of gold in it. I don't know if you can see that shimmer. So I'm going to sand that down. And there is that bead. Looks kind of like a blooming rose. Like that. So, I hope you learned something today. Something that you're interested in trying. It's really not a lot of work. You just have to do your stuff in steps and I hope that when you're done you have beads like this or beads like this that show character and just add another dimension to your work.